interesting question because there's nothing that requires him to create what we consider the modern cabinet in the Constitution. The Constitution creates the executive offices of Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of State, and Secretary of War. There's also the Attorney General who isn't the head of any executive department. And Washington decided to work with these men on an intimate basis, on a face-to-face -face basis, uh, which ultimately would become the operation of a presidential cabinet. He could have, for instance, used the Vice President, John Adams, who is the President Pro Tem of the Senate, who sits in the Senate, as something like a Prime Minister who was kind of doing the bidding of the executive branch in the legislative branch as sort of a speaker for the executive. But he very much didn't do that. And there's somewhat of a mystery why, except for the fact that he was clear that he wanted to separate executive powers from legislative powers. Washington had experience in managing his generals and taking their uh, thoughts, their uh, perceptions, and really listening to what they had to say about any situation before he made a move. He was a very deliberate man, and he liked to hear all sides of the argument. He also uh, was very good at kind of managing his estate from afar, so he would require constant reports from the managers of Mount Vernon while he was away from the estate. So he was used to receiving reports from different people that he was trying to get to execute his commands. And so he really kind of combines these two roles of management style, really, in his executive cabinet, what becomes known as the president's cabinet, because he would ask the different uh, Secretary of State or Secretary of Treasury and Secretary of War, their opinions on pressing matters of affair, on legislation, on diplomacy, and he would hear their opinions and he would let them argue it out and then he would ultimately make a decision. Interestingly, his cabinet emerged over time to become really a team of rivals in the way that we think of Lincoln having a team of rivals, but it wasn't by design. Washington really wanted people that he could trust, that he knew were capable, but that also represented a diversity of regional interests. Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of the Treasury, is from New York. William Knox, the Secretary of War, is from Massachusetts. Thomas Jefferson, the Secretary of State, is from Virginia. Edmund Randolph, the Attorney General, had been Governor of Virginia, had actually been the personal attorney of Washington in many issues, and it also served as aide-de-camp during the, the, uh, the war, the Revolutionary War. So he really had a group of men that he knew and knew quite well. But what happened over time, as people had different visions about the direction of the country, as the French Revolution erupted and really almost forced the United States into war overseas, uh, different rivalries emerged within his cabinet that ultimately uh, would break it apart. Thomas Jefferson, of course, representing a point of view that agricultural interests were the key to America's future. Uh, Alexander Hamilton representing a point of view that closer ties with the British trade system, uh, with British capital, and with the development of America's own financial system was crucial for the future development of the country, really came to see uh, the state of affairs in very different ways. And were constantly sort of in Washington's ear trying to get him to support their point of view. Edmund Randolph sort of stood in the middle between these two poles. And in fact, Jefferson would call Randolph basically a weak reed who would blow with the wind and was constantly frustrated that his fellow Virginian wouldn't go along with his point of view. But Washington was able to manage these personalities and these point of views particularly well for most of his uh, tenure as president. Ultimately, they all resigned, and they resigned both from exhaustion but also because they more and more were unproductive in terms of working together. And Washington would have a difficult time replacing them with men of equal stature.